Um, yeah, so hello, I, I work for My Society, uh, which is a charity in the UK that um, helps people uh, in the sort of civic aspects of their lives. Um, so in the UK, we run websites such as Write to Them to help people contact their representative, uh, Fix My Street, um, which the Norwegian version, fixcatomy.no. Uh, we um, pet her upstairs. Um, I helped set up a few years ago. Um, what do they know, which helps you make uh, freedom of information requests uh, to government, uh, other civic organizations, and publish them online. Um, but over the years, we've sort of um, done more international uh, related stuff, um, of which uh, the Norwegian Fix My Street was uh, one of the early ones. <clears throat> and then um, we sort of realized over the years that we um, that people were sort of doing the same thing over and over. Um, there was always, you always like, if you wanted to look at what your parliament was doing, you always needed a way of showing speeches uh, of that, of the parliament. Um, or you, if you wanted to do a, a fix my street type site somewhere in the world, you need a way to map a point on the, on a map to who is responsible for fixing the pothole uh, at that point. Um, so, my society, in conjunction with a Chilean organization, uh, FCI, uh, set up an organization called POPLUS, um, which was uh, sort of a group trying to sort of bring people together working on the same sort of thing in different countries around the world and providing tools and components that could help make things easier so people weren't always necessarily reinventing the wheel uh, in every place that they were doing. Um, so it sort of started last April, I think, April 2014, I think, was the, the sort of launch. Um, and so in this short talk, I'm just going to introduce a few of the component-type things of which I've worked on and some examples of them and uh, how they might be useful to you, maybe. So first one. Uh, so Map It. Map It is a component that maps points and postcodes from, um, you give it a point on the map and it will map it to the administrative areas in its database and things like that. So for example, so for example, if, uh, right to them, this is the UK site for contacting your representative, so pardon, CB1. So that's a UK postcode. So if we give that, we will find out that um, it lists your representatives. We had we just had a, some elections in the UK. You might be aware. Um, so um, there's there's no MP yet because we haven't got the new the new information. But there's the MEPs, um, and the way that works is that it's going to map it behind the scenes, saying here's the postcode CB21TQ. Where is that? And mapping it to the to the right areas for the representatives. Uh, Fix my street similarly does the same thing. So if you type in. You get, you get a map and you click on, when you click somewhere on the map, it tells you that that's going to go to Birmingham City Council, who are responsible for fixing things in New Street Station, maybe. Um, there's a Norwegian map it already, so um, as you can see, it's quite similar. Um, and we've only just recently added the ability to translate, so that's, it's still in English, but um, hopefully it will be in Norwegian soon. Uh, but this was set up by uh, the Norwegian Unix users group. Uh, as part of the work needed to do a Norwegian Fix My Street. Um, uh, Fix Gatomy, there you are, as you see there. Um, and if you give that a Norwegian postcode, I'm going to mess this up now. Hey! Um, and that is using Map It behind the scenes. So there you are, that's the, uh, that's the Norwegian page for Map It for the postal code uh, 0373, which I think is the nearest code, postal code to here. Uh, and there's the areas which um, that this installation of MapIt says that point is within. And similarly, if you give it the location of this building here, uh, we find out this building is in, I'm not going to try and pronounce them because I will get it wrong, uh, Oslo. I can, I can do that one. Uh, <laughs> um, but so if we follow, if we look at some of these ones, we'll see that um, there's the power grid administration for this building. Uh, the shoreline administration, which is the whole of Norway, uh, the commune and um, the public transport administrator, 
uh, and the public roads administrator, um, all, so that's all the different sort of administrative areas that cover this building uh, that, that are in this, this version of MapIt. Um, so that was a special one that uh, NUUG set up for Norway. Uh, we also have a global uh, MapIt installation um, that uses all the data from OpenStreetMap that are tagged with boundary administrative or boundary political. Um, and if you give that the coordinates of this building, there's, there's less data because it's, it's only the data that's in OpenStreetMap, but it does have this, so it has, uh, this building is in Norway. Uh, the reason it's zoomed out that much is because I've no idea what that island is. Uh, maybe the Norwegians do, but that is, that is in OpenStreetMap. That little island is part of Norway. Um, there's always, the UK is similar, there's a, everyone's always got little islands around the place. Um, but also this is the level nine boundary for this building, which I think we just, this building just fits in. Um, so so this, these are some installations that are running of the code. Obviously the code is all open source and anyone can install and set up their own one containing whatever boundaries they want as well. Um, and that's a useful sort of base component that lots of our sites in the UK and other sites around the world use to provide lookups for representatives, for administrative areas, or whatever, whatever you would like to put in in your installation. Um, so that's MapIt. Uh, the next one I'm gonna talk about is Popit. Uh, they're not all named like this, but, but the ones I'm talking about are. Um, so Popit is a sort of system, a database system for storing um, people and organizations, so like MPs, representatives, um, parliaments, and people they work for. Um, it uses a standard called a Popolo, which is a sort of international data standard for representing people and organizations. Um, here's an example of uh, Eduskunta, um, which I believe is Finnish. Yes, yes, Finnish. <laughs> um, so this is the Finnish parliament. Um, just thinking, um, but it's more, it's, it's a data store. Um, and there's a person from Sinai in Malaysia, um, and a, a member of parliament um, for the People's Justice Party. Um, um, and this is also a, a sort of base component that can be used by things. So just recently in the UK, we used it to power your next MP. Um, which was a site showing you all the candidates for the general election we've just had, and also then showing who the winner is. Um, so there's that's my constituency in Birmingham. Um, and also they work for you. Uh, it's sort of now underlyingly powered by um, the, the Popolo JSON standard. Um, so these are all the, this is the new, all the new MPs in the UK since uh, Thursday, well, no, last night, I guess, uh, Friday. Um, so that's our, this is our, the UK's website for saying what your MP's been up to in Parliament, so you can just like look at Diana but, and see what she's just been saying and stuff and get email alerts when they speak and so on. Um, and so this is a site that we're sort of working on now, uh, which uh, I think you can contribute to because I don't think Norway's on there yet, but maybe this weekend in the Civic Hacking Upstairs uh, we can do something about that, but we're trying to get the list of politicians for every country in the world uh, in the same standard format for representing them so that we can then, everyone can then interoperate them and work them to do data. So, um, uh, so again, this is the Finnish, uh, this is the 32nd Parliament of Finland, uh, which was 1995 to 1999, um, which had these party groupings and had all these MPs or representatives. Um, so, but and, and that data is all available, as it says in in CSV or in in the standard. But all the, so all shared in the same standard. And there's the Danish uh, for, for, uh, Parliament um, from 2011 to 2000 for the current the current Danish Parliament, which again is sort of there. But we don't we don't yet have Norway. But I'm I'm hoping this weekend we can we can do something about that. Um, but yeah, so that's a, a component for storing people and, and, and organizations. And then the A, the third component I'm gonna talk about is Say It, which is a component for storing speeches that the people have said when they're representing the areas from the other two components. Um, 
So all of these are sort of can be used as standalone things. So as I said, we've got this global map it that has all of the OpenStreetMap data in. So if that has what you need, you can just use that. Pop it, you can uh, create a, an, an instance online and just fill that up with if you want. Um, or you can install the software yourself and so that. And say it similarly has we have we host a hosted version of this where you can create your own database or you can install it as a component within your own project, hopefully. Um, as some examples of people who've done that, so this is yeah, this is our hosted version, so um, where you can store speeches. So as an example, we've got the Conservative Party speeches from the last ten years, um, which they deleted from their own website, but um, we we kept we kept a copy. Um, so you, you can see whenever they say something. Um, but it can be used for all sorts of things. Here's President Nixon's conversations in the Watergate scandal, the tapes uh, for the walk tape handle. Um, uh, so this is some sites using it. This is the, pre, um, the People's Assembly website in South Africa, um, which is the, the a sort of website that takes the Hansard data from South African Parliament and puts it on their website. Um, this is every mention of Norway in the plays of Shakespeare. Um, which is all, I think, Hamlet. It's, it's all Hamlet, obviously. Oh, no, there's a Macbeth. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Hamlet, 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 Macbeth. Um, so, yeah, so you can store, you can store, uh, it's not, it doesn't have to be political speeches, but that is, I think, the most common and general use that we're going to want it to do. The Leveson Inquiry, which was the inquiry recently in the UK into press um, uh, phone hacking and scandals, so you can read about, that was all put online, but it was put online as, you know, PDFs, with some of the PDFs had four pages per page of the PDF, and it was 25 lines, monospaced, uh, horrible to search. Each morning and afternoon was a different PDF and stuff, whereas this one you can just sort of type in Norway and search all the transcripts and find out that um, I think Norway has the highest newspaper readership in the world, according to, according to Ms. Phillips. I don't know if I don't know if that's true, but some someone someone said that. It's not true. Uh, oh, unless it's Finland. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, so they weren't sure. They weren't sure. Um, oh, I get that. Um, and this is a Canadian, uh, the Nova Scotia legislature that somebody has. Um, uh, you say it is the um, is powering this list of debates. So it's just another. Um, Um, and you can sort of, and the underlying, so you can import speakers from Poppit, so um, that sort of thing. And you can, um, a Coma Natosa is an international standard um, that an uh, Italian university in conjunction with a pan group of African parliaments um, authored, which is a, sta a standard for storing speech data in XML format. Um, so you, we can import that as well and export it. So if, if, if your parliament does produce data in that format already, which I doubt. Um, then, we, then we can import it. <laughs> More likely, you might have to create your own uh, format from some horrible PDFs, which is uh, never fun. Um, but those are those are three components. There are others. There's another. There's a map it like component called represent boundaries. Um, there are some lower level components like ones to handle email bounces um, and things like that. Um, I believe somebody's currently working on um, a version of a write a writing to MP in public component. Um, um, but hopefully, yeah, so hopefully it's just a, 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 um, a, a collective of things that people might be able to use in their own countries or in their own organizations and areas to help them um, do civic website action type things. Um, if anyone has any questions about any of these, I'm around all weekend, probably in the civic hacking or just in, in general, um, or, or now, I think we, are, we haven't got much time, but if anyone's got any questions now. Um, but I hope that was a nice introduction. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I do think we can take one or two questions right now, because now we have about 50 minutes, no, we have quite a bit of lunch time, so we can just eat into our lunch time if your stomachs are not too... Uh, Bad. So, um, yeah, go straight ahead. You mentioned in passing a Hansard Society. The, 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 how many countries have some semblance of a, of a systematic record of everything their parliament has to say? I mean, you know, in Britain, we have the Hansard Society. Um, 
Oh, all interesting. Abortion countries do have that, and do they cooperate with you to put their data in? Um, so in the U I'll do the second bit first because I know the answer to that one. Um, in the UK, um, the Parliament has slowly, I think, probably prompted by us uh, doing it anyway, been moving to a more open data, um, working in the open, open source uh, way of working. They, um, we get, they work for you, the UK Parliament gets its, web, gets its Hansard data by scraping their HTML, um, which is generated from Adobe <laughs> if PIF, PIF Maker, or whatever it's called, Fame Maker, um, overnight. Um, but they publish their people data now in an op in a open data um, structured format, which we use to get ministerial titles and stuff. So um, I hold out hope that they will. That the, the hands, I, I mean, I think they do. They do allow you access to the XML, but the XML because it's from Adobe Frame Maker is no better than the HTML. Um, <laughs> it's um, it's basically yeah, it's horrible. Um, in terms of how many countries, um, I don't know. Um, I think all the Commonwealth ones. Definitely do. Um, I do know that some people um, uh, in Kenya, the, we work with a Muslendo organization in Kenya to do sort of a parliamentary monitoring, and they send people into the parliament to transcribe themselves, and then and they, they and get out that way. Um, I think even, to, I think most parliaments feel that they should have a record, even if they don't want anyone to look at it. Um, <laughs> So I think I think most most will do. In the UK, at least, it's much worse when you the the lower down you get. Like the UK Parliament does publish all its debates and stuff. Whereas, like at my council, publishes well, we had a meeting and we decided this, but you never find out who voted or who what was discussed, whether anyone was against it or for it. Um, so I, I, there's. There's, a, there's, definitely a, and there's definitely in the UK a lot, lot of the local level that's far worse than at a national level. All right, let's take one more question before we head out for lunch. Hey, thank you for your presentation. I have a question about um, more the use of the data, because that's important to have open data and to have platforms where you can look into other data. But what I'm really interested in how people do use them, because having a lot of data, if you don't get intelligence out of it, it's useless. So that, do you have some example to, uh, or to, to show or to present about how people use this data in, in some intelligent form? Like, for example, to show some politic, politician who are contradicting themselves or who say one thing in the country two days later, or I, I don't know, but it's just how, it is, how is this used? <laughs> Sure. Um, so, well, for the, the Map It one, I sort of, we, we wrote Map It in the first place for precisely that reason, um, for the Contact New MP and Fix My Street, um, both of which use Map It to help the, yeah, they, the people who use Fix My Street and the right to them don't care about the map, the, the data in Map It that's doing all the, the work. They just get their pothole fixed or contact their uh, councillor. Um, for the other ones, um, they work for you, so that, it, it, it's because that's old, it doesn't you say it, but it theoretically could. Um, that currently sends about 30,000 emails every day to people who've signed up to hear when their MP speaks in Parliament or when a particular word is said, like if they're interested in horses. Um, they can get an email every time their MP speaks, which the official, si official Parliament doesn't do. Um, and we, we definitely know lots of people do use that for all sorts of, whether it's like campaigning or interest or whatever. Um, and then the people data, well, so, so I gave the example of we used it for the, your candidates in the, in the election we've just had, which was the, I believe it was the main open only source of that information. Uh, so uh, in, in the last week, Google on the Google UK homepage linked, used our data to um, show all the candidates for you, you typed in your constituency or whatever or your postcode and it gave you all the candidates which was using our data so obviously all the people who were on google that day didn't care that it was using our poppet to store the data but they were getting information on their candidates that way so um if i can give an uh, additional answer to that um there's maybe it's a competitor of you but for the european parliament the, there is some sites that are tracking the voting uh, of each member of parliament and then they can uh, deduce uh, how much an individual member of parliament is aligned with his, his, his faction in the 
that's one way to look at it. So that's how the user would see that it actually followed the group or just did that alone. So I think, sadly, we'll have to conclude this discussion. The good thing is we can just continue during lunch and Matthew will actually be around, if I understand correctly. Or, yeah, I'm so, away all weekend. Yeah. Uh, there will be lots of hands-on stuff discussed with him and another round of applause. I think this is really exciting stuff. Thank you. Thank you.